Franklin and Marshall College is a private residential co-educational college with a total undergraduate population of 1,900 students. The guided inquiry pedagogies described are used in some sections of our introductory chemistry course and in our physical chemistry course. Only one type of introductory chemistry course is offered. Students enrolled in this course include potential chemistry, biology, and other science majors, pre-medical students, and a few students fulfilling a college distribution requirement. Each guided inquiry section has about 25 students. For the past five academic years, these general chemistry sections have been taught in a student-active learning environment using cooperative learning techniques. Guided inquiry courses are very different from the traditional chemistry classroom. No lectures are given during the three 50-minute class periods per week. Rather, students work in groups or on a series of activities designed to enable them to develop and understand chemical concepts. The instructor moves among the groups as a facilitator. The students form hypotheses and analyze data, leading to further refinements of the hypotheses and to formulations of chemical concepts. When K is greater than 1, no, okay. it's favorable. Um, I know delta G, when delta G is positive, it's favorable. When delta H is negative, it's favorable. This is thermodynamically unfavorable. <coughs> Wait, what is it? If delta G is positive, then, it's unfavorable. then K is thermodynamically unfavorable. Thermodynamically, it's unfavorable. Yeah, so. Favorable. This is favorable. Oh, oh, sorry. So delta H is less than zero, so it would be number A. Can we explain that? Because when delta, it has to be favorable. So in order to be favorable, delta H has to be negative, and delta S has to be positive. The major premises of this implementation are that students learn better when they are actively engaged and thinking in class. They construct knowledge and draw conclusions themselves by analyzing data and discussing ideas. They learn how to work together to understand concepts and solve problems. The instructor serves as a facilitator to assist in the learning process. The instructor answers no question that the students can reasonably be expected to answer themselves. I think you should answer this question based on whatever you know already. I mean, I'm not going to tell you what the answer is. Each class begins with a five-minute quiz on the previous day's material. Every class period, each member of the group is assigned a new role. Manager, recorder, technician, presenter. The membership of the groups changes frequently at first, less frequently as the semester progresses. The groups use guided inquiry activities which follow the learning cycle paradigm to develop and learn concepts. Students are expected to reinforce learning by reading the appropriate sections of the textbook after the introduction of concepts in class. The instructor spends most of the period moving among the groups, observing and listening to the group's discussions. For each group, the instructor examines the recorder's answers to the critical thinking questions, reading over the shoulder of the recorder. These are considered to be the official group answers. A copy of these answers is submitted at the end of each class period for the instructor's perusal. This provides an opportunity for feedback to the groups and to catch any confusion or misunderstanding which may have been missed during class. If the instructor finds the students are proceeding at an adequate pace and they are demonstrating sufficient understanding, no intervention is needed. After staying for a brief period of time and listening to the group interactions, the instructor moves on. Occasionally a question may be posed to one or more of the group members to make sure that he or she understands a concept or to elicit a verbal explanation of a group answer which may be correct. If one or more of the answers to critical thinking questions is incorrect, the instructor must make a decision whether to intervene or not. There is a strong temptation to intervene, but this should be avoided if possible. Students learn best and retain information longer if the group working together discovers the answer. Telling the students the correct answer has little benefit. 
Often the students will encounter a seeming contradiction or conflict at a later point in the activity and thereby uncover their own error. We have found that it is possible to teach the same content as we did in our previous mode of instruction. We have observed an across-the-board improvement in student performance. The percent of students receiving an A has risen from 19 to 24. The percent of students receiving a D, F, or withdrawing from the course has fallen from 22 to 10. We believe this is the case because students who are active and involved in a classroom find it difficult not to learn something. Thank you.